In this video, we'll see the I.O. ports present in 8051. So there are four 8-bit I.O. ports available in 8051. So these four ports are named as port 0, port 1, port 2 and port 3. So basically these ports are used for interfacing external devices to 8051. So using these digital ports, we can send data from CPU to external peripheral or we can take data from external peripheral to the CPU. So port 0 is multiplexed with lower order addresses and data bus that is AD0 to AD7. So port 0 is having two functions. One function is it can be used as a simple digital input output port and the second function is it is treated as AD0 to AD7 that is lower order address and data bus. So whenever we want to interface external memory to 8051 at that time the address bus that is lower order address bus is available on this port 0. So the lower 8 address lines are available on port 0 and the, at the same time the data bus is also present on port 0. So we have to demultiplex again this address and data using an external latch. The next port is port 1. It is having only a function as IO port. So this is a dedicated IO port. It is not having any other function. So this is just used for interfacing external peripherals to 8051. Then port 2 is multiplexed with higher order address bus that is from A8 to A15. So whenever we want to interface external memory to 8051, at that time the maximum capacity of the memory that we can interface to 8051 is of 64 kilobytes. So for that 16 address lines are required. So out of that the lower 8 address lines are from AD0 to AD7 and the upper or the higher address bus is available from A8 to A15. So these 8 address lines and these 8 address lines total 16 address lines are there using which we can interface a maximum of 64 kilobytes of memory. Then port 3 is having alternate functions. It means it can be used as a simple digital input output port or it every pin of port 3 is having a alternate function. So at a time either we can use that port as a digital IO port or we can assign the function uh, to that particular port. So these are the alternate functions available on port 3. So we have already discussed this in the first lecture. So port 3 is having 8 pins. So out of that P3.0 is treated as a receive pin or it is also called as RxD pin. So this is used for serial reception. So whenever we want to receive 8 bit data from external device at that time that data will be received on this P3.0 pin. Next pin is P3.1. So this is used for transmission. So it is called as TXD pin. It is used for serial transmission. So whenever CPU wants to send some data serially to external device at that time that data will be sent using P3.1 pin. Next pin is P3.2. So P3.2 and P3.3 pins are the external interrupt pins. So as we know that interrupt is used to interrupt the CPU that is it stops the main program and it executes the interrupt service routing. So that is use of a interrupt. So whenever any external device requires servicing from CPU at that time it will interrupt the CPU and that interrupt signal can be given either to P3.2 or to P3.3 pin. So both these pins can be used as a external interrupt pins. Next pin is P3.4 and P3.5. So these two pins are again timer input pins. So whenever we want to use timer as a counter. So as we know that timer can be operated in two modes. First one is timer mode and second one is counter mode. In timer mode the clock pulses that are given are internal clock pulses. Whereas whenever a timer is operated as a counter at that time the external clock pulses are given as the clock input to the timer. So whenever we operate timer as a counter, the external clock pulses should be given either to T0 pin or to T1 pin that is P3.4 or P3.5 pin. So P3.4 is for timer 0 and P3.5 is for timer 1. 
next pin is p3.6 that is right bar pin so this pin is used whenever we want to interface external memory to 8051 so whenever we want to read anything from the external memory or external ram memory to be specific then this pin is used to give the right signal next pin is p3.7 so this pin is called as read pin so this is again a active low pin so whenever cpu wants to read anything from the external ram at that time it uh, makes a low signal on this pin and it can read the data from the external memory so these are the pins that are available on port 3 so either port 3 can be used as a simple digital input output port uh, using which we can interface external peripheral or we can make use of these pins for different purposes so now we'll see how the uh, hardware structure of io pin is present in 8051 so this is a structure for specifically for port 1 pin so we can have the structure similar for all other port pins but since the other ports are having multiplexed functions there is slight difference in the structure so this is of port 1 which is not having any other alternate function so it is a most simplest structure of all the ports so this is actually the structure for an individual pin so as you can see here this is a structure for p 1.x x stands for 0 to 7 so here we can have p 1.0 p 1.1 and so on up to p 1.7 so this is a structure for an individual pin so in this structure we have a main thing as a latch so we have a d latch which is used to store one bit data then we have two buffers so these are actually tri-state buffers so whenever this tri-state signal is low there is no connection between input and output same is the case over here but whenever this tri-state signal is high at that time the input is connected to the output then we have a mosfet so this is a n mos so whenever here we have a high signal to the gate pin of this transistor then this uh, mosfet turns on or and whenever here we have a low signal this mosfet is off so this is a pull up resistor which is connected to the pin so using this we can have a fixed status on the pin so this is the description that i have just explained right now so i will skip this and we'll go to the next slide so whenever we want to write one to the output pin then we have to follow certain steps so whenever we want to make this particular pin one first of all we have to send one to this internal cpu bus so we have to write a one to the pin then that one will be available at the output of this d latch and q bar will be zero so whenever this q bar is zero this mosfet will be off so as you can see it is turned off so there will be no connection between this pin and ground so whatever signal is available over here that signal will be available on the pin so since this pin is connected to vcc through this pull up resistor the signal here will be logic 1 so in this way the signal becomes high next is whenever we want to write 0 to output pin the process is the same just instead of writing 1 to the cpu bus we have to write now 0 this q output becomes 0 q bar becomes 1 so whenever this q bar is 1 this transistor turns on and there is a short between this uh, drain and source so this pin here is connected to ground to this transistor so the logic here becomes zero whenever we want to make any pin as an input pin first of all we have to send one to that particular pin now consider here that we want to make the entire port one as input port means we want to read the data from external peripheral to cpu at that time we have to send ff to port one so that can be done with the help of instruction move p1 comma hash zero ff hex so with this one will be sent to all the internal cpu bus of port one so that one will be available at the output of this latch zero will be available at q bar so this transistor will be off so whatever signal is present right now in this case it is logic one we have considered that this pin is at logic high so that one will be available at the input of this price state buffer and at the same time these three signals are generated by the cpu that is read pin is made one then read latch is made 0 
and write to latch is made one so this read pin is one so it this tri state buffer is on so whatever is available at input that will be sent to the output and this read latch is equal to zero so this tri state buffer will be off so there will be no connection between input and output and this write to latch is made one so whatever signal is available over here that will be stored in the latch so we have assumed that the logic is high so that high will be available over here that will go to the internal cpu bus as well as it will go to the latch next is whenever we want to read the input pin and assuming that the input signal is low then in that case again first of all whenever we want to read any pin at that time we have to make it as input by sending data ff to that particular port or that individual pin so with that again this transistor will be off so whatever signal is available over here in this case it is a low signal that will be given to this tri state buffer again the same thing will happen this buffer will be on this buffer will be off and write to latch will be made again high so whatever signal is available here that will be given to internal cpu bus as well as the latch so this is how the uh, internal structure of port pin works in the next video we'll see the interrupt structure available in 8051 for more information you can log on to the website given in the description of this video thank you